Human history is littered with astonishing accomplishments. Some of the advancements made by mankind in our short time on this earth border on the miraculous. And some of the individuals responsible for those advancements, well, the word genius doesn't even cut it. We could talk endlessly about the amount of lives penicillin has saved or what an unbelievable feat of engineering the pyramids are, but wouldn't you rather hear about how Louis XIV had two buttholes? There's a reason why describing something as medieval has come to mean primitive or obsolete. You only have to glance at a history book to see that they were up to some crazy shenanigans back then, to the point where it was hard to tell if you were being tortured or treated for an illness. But let's start with torture. Sure, why not? Medieval torture methods were just as bad as the stereotypes would have us believe. One particularly gruesome device was the choke pair, a metal contraption that torturers would insert into a victim's orifices and then expand. And those nasty little medievals used simple devices and in many cases they would harness the force of gravity to inflict unimaginable pain. Thanks, Newton. The Judas Cradle was a pyramid-shaped spike that a victim would be forced to sit on so that it penetrated their, well, anus. As if that wasn't bad enough, torturers could strap weights to the feet of their victims to increase the suffering. The ancient Greeks loved a bit of torture too, but they liked to hurt you with ingredients you'd normally add to a stir-fry. Figging, for example, was the insertion of a peeled ginger root into one of the lower orifices to cause an intolerable burning sensation. Oh, and if you were found guilty of adultery in ancient Greece, the husband of the woman with whom you committed the crime had the right to sodomize you with radishes. Seems fair. Speaking of food, do you ever wonder what people did before the invention of assembly line cups and bowls? In ancient England, people used the tops of hollowed out human skulls to drink and eat from. Now if you're cringing at the thought of some poor peasant having their heads cut off just so a rich person could slurp pea soup from their cranium, don't worry because that skull was probably filled with evil spirits anyway, at least according to the many cultures around the world who partook in the questionable custom of trepanation. In the ancient world, you'd probably be wise not to admit to having a headache because doctors might attempt to cure you by drilling a hole in your head. The practice of trepanation was used to treat convulsions, headaches and infections because doctors believed that they were caused by evil spirits being trapped inside the head that needed to be let out. Ah, uh, it's fine. Leave mine in. No, honestly, I'm good. All those hollowed out skulls meant there were probably a load of brains lying around for scientists to mess around with. Physician John French describes the process for making a tincture made of brains in his 1651 page turner, The Art of Distillation. Take the brains of a young man that hath died a violent death, mash in a stone mortar, steep in wine, and digest it half a year in horse dung before distilling. I have no idea why that didn't catch on. Many medieval saints were reputed to have healing powers and they often cared for lepers and those afflicted with similarly gruesome diseases by licking their wounds. Saint Mary Magdalene of Depatsi licked the sores of the ill and even sucked maggots out of wounds. Saint Angela of Foligno drank water she had used to bathe a leper's feet and purposely swallowed one of his scabs. The rule of thumb with medieval medicine was generally, if it does anything, then it's probably working. This led to many medicines that were actively bad for you. For instance, a common remedy for stomach worms would cause brutal diarrhea. Doctors assumed that the diarrhea meant the body was flushing out dead worms, when actually it was just flushing out all of your insides. While we're on the subject of poo, let me just digress for a sec to tell you that this lad, Mozart, was obsessed with the stuff. Mozart was really into toilet humour. Two of his songs actually talk about analingus. He also wrote letters to his family members where he described his farts in great detail. He wrote a letter to his cousin which went, Well, I wish you good night, but first. Shit in your bed and make it burst. 
Sleep soundly, my love. Into your mouth, your arse you'll shove. She must have been very flexible. I think we can all agree that fart jokes are always funny, and that's been true since at least 1900 BC. That's right, the first joke ever recorded was a fart joke. It's in there somewhere. Side note, King Henry II employed a professional flatulist named Roland the Farter. One day, the 17th Earl of Oxford came into Queen Elizabeth's courtroom, bowed to her, and let out an enormous fart. The man was duly mortified, so mortified in fact, that he went into self-imposed exile for seven years. As you can imagine, the Black Death and medieval medicine didn't exactly mix well. People had no idea what caused the disease and even less of an idea what cured it. So they tried some truly insane remedies. Many people believed that pressing the shaved bum of a live chicken against the boils of an infected person was the only solution. The only problem was that the chickens then also became infected and helped spread the disease. Marcus Aurelius, largely known for his philosophy and humanitarianism, faced an interesting gladiator dilemma. His wife Faustina became aroused over one combatant and confessed her passion to her husband. His solution? Faustina was ordered to strip and sleep with the gladiator in question, who was then murdered while on top of her. Afterwards, she was obliged to bathe in his blood, do a quick clean-up, and then make love to her husband. The Romans devised a punishment to deal with those who committed parasite, that is, people who killed their parents. The criminal was sewn into a leather sack with several wild animals, often dogs, cats, snakes and even monkeys, then thrown into a body of water. Bit excessive, isn't it? Speaking of excessive, during the 7th century BC, ancient Roman Vestal Virgins were required to keep their hymens intact as proof of virginity until age 30. If they engaged in sexual conduct, they were given a stern talking to. <laughs> Just kidding, they were buried alive. When Philip, the Duke of Burgundy, died in 1506, his wife Joanna refused to let him go. Literally refusing to part with her philandering husband, she viciously clung to the body. Even when her father and the government stepped in to finally bury Philip, their separation didn't last long. Joanna ordered him exhumed, leapt at his coffin and kissed his dead feet. Aw, oh, couple goals. From that moment on, you couldn't have Joanna if she couldn't bring Philip. The coffin, thankfully closed most of the time, would accompany her to meals, travels, and even by her bedside. Yep, they were that annoying couple. By the way, he was also known as Philip the Handsome, which kind of explains all this. Speaking of Philips, when Philip IV of France discovered his three daughters-in-law were having intimate relations with knights from his court, he actually forced the girls to stand trial for a adultery. The resulting scandal became the brutal Tour de Nel affair. In the end, two of the girls had their heads shaven and were thrown in prison, but their lovers faced a far worse fate. They were castrated and then either drawn and quartered or flayed alive, broken on a wheel and then hanged. Yikes. You can't have a list called Gross History and not mention everyone's favourite Boney M song and winner of Russia's blackest fingernails for six years running. Rasputin. The mystic monk went for incredibly long periods of time without washing. He once bragged about not changing his underwear for over six months, and food would often rot in his beard. Despite those personal choices, a group of Russian women still worshipped his genitals. Oh, those Russians. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more.